So, uh, nudity filter's on. I think I've turned the music off, too. I should probably make sure once I load into the game here. Um, but for those that are maybe wondering about uh, the nudity, the filter's on. Um, thank you, Francisco. Uh, he mentioned to somebody else in the chat that if you put at Christian Geek Central somewhere in your post, I'll be more likely to see it. Um, and then just looking up Magnus uh, 88 millimeter um, after greeting me earlier, I missed this, said, uh, you have helped me understand certain things about the Bible. Um, that's great to hear. Thank you so much uh, for letting me know that. Um, let's see here. Okay, so Francisco Rees asks a very important question. Are you playing this on PS4? Uh, because I, I put it up there on the... Um, the game title as PS4, and let me actually adjust that, because technically I'm playing it on the PS5. This, including this game, is a bit of a cheat, but I think just a bit. Let me explain in a second here. Uh, PS5. Um, so, let me talk some stats on this. Cyberpunk 2077 when it released, had a Metacritic score for PlayStation 4 of 57. 57. Pretty abysmal. Um, but the PS5, I believe, Metacritic um, is 86 on modern consoles. So it's a bit of a range there. The reason I'm including it here is because I kind of wanted to play Cyberpunk 2077. <laughs> um, but also... The, the, the waters for me are muddied in terms of comparing the PS4 and the PS5 version. I did play the PS4 version at launch, but not on a PS4. I played it on a PS5. And so all the technical issues that it was criticized... Well, not all. Um, most of the... And, and certainly the worst of the technical issues it was criticized for and that took such huge chunks out of the score for it at launch, I was not dealing with. Um, there was still glitches, but not like horrible stuttering and like game crashing all the time and just like things that would prohibit play. There was just things that made it or, or made it just ridiculously ugly. You know, I, I wasn't dealing with that. Um, I was dealing mostly with some glitches here and there that usually didn't interrupt my gameplay. And that was smoothed out um, in the... In, you know, in the, the, the year over time, over many patches, you know, over the, over the course of that year. And I would play it on and off. Every time there was a new patch, I'd get into it for a few hours, you know, and then get out of it again. And, and I, I didn't realize that uh, I actually played most of the game that way. Every time there would be an update, I'd get in for like three to five hours, and then I'd be out. And I ended up playing most of the main story missions on the PS4 version on my PS5. Uh, when the PS5 free update came, uh, I installed it and really couldn't tell you what the differences were. I mean, um, maybe there was like a 60 FPS frame boost. There, there were some little niceties, but I mean, it wasn't like, oh my gosh, this, this is what they promised. It still wasn't, you know... Um, so I feel like the experience I had on PS4 is pretty much the experience I had once I got the PS5 update. Um, but anyway, even updated reviews now have been all over the place, um, even after the recent re-release on, on current-gen consoles. Regarding the, uh, the update and re-release... Uh, of the, the modern console version, Gaming Bolt said, Cyberpunk 2077 has some genuinely good story moments, some legitimately well-written quests and characters, and occasional flashes of brilliance with choice and consequence mechanics. But it still feels so vapid, so shallow. The open world is there to be looked at, not to be engaged with. I would underline that. Serving as little more than set dressing. And most of the game's role-playing systems still feel too messily executed. I don't know if I feel that way or not. Uh, if not as much as they were before. Drastically dropped standards might give the perception that this is a huge leap forward, but it's actually just the bare minimum. This is a marginal improvement at best. Personally, um, as I said, PS5 version didn't feel much different to me than playing the PS4 version on a PS5, apart from those technical improvements. As far as my dislikes of this game, 
the world interaction systems and skills feel very lacking compared to other open world RPGs. Um, so if you're thinking like Fallout, you know, other Western open world RPGs, Elix certainly has way, way more skills and uh, that, that allow you to interact with the world and crafting systems, that kind of stuff. Um, so I would say this game has more systems than Far Cry and Assassin's Creed, but significantly less than most modern Western RPGs like Fallout, Elder Scrolls, Outer Worlds, or Pillars of Eternity. Um, so if you adjust your expectations and say this is, in terms of its systems complexity, somewhere between an action open world RPG, or an action open world game with RPG elements, and an actual open world action RPG. Um, I also dislike that it has a pre-chosen protagonist, a voiced protagonist as well, and very limited dialogue options. Um, I feel like sometimes they try to simulate more of a roleplay experience by putting a timer on the, the amount of time you have to choose a response. That is the small minority of times that they do that. They don't do that often, but it's recurring enough throughout the game that I'm like, why are you doing this? Why are you doing this? I, I don't like that as a mechanic to try and create a sense of realism. Um, because it just creates simulated realism. It's like, you know, you might say, well, the timer's there because, you know, you wouldn't have time to to think in the moment about how you're going to respond. You just have to respond in real life. Well, in real life, I can choose a much better response than the four options they give me here, you know. So let me think. <laughs> let me think about the least crappy option <laughs> in the dialogue choices. Um Let's see here. Uh, there's also some, let's see, some included systems aren't rewarding to pursue. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah. So, like, there is, like, sniping. There's a sniper rifle, and you can, you know, do some long-range attacking, but I, that's often, in my experience, nullified by speedy enemies that, like, once you're spotted or once they know they're being attacked, they race out into the field of battle, and they... You know, they're, they're in your face before you know it, and you're pulling out your, your shotgun. Um, the police assignments that are peppered all over the place do technically give you things to do in the open world, but they're very repetitive. They don't have as much interesting story as I'd liked. That's not the case, though, with a lot of the gigs, uh, which are similar, you know, non-story side mission, side activities in the city. Um, and there's... A lot of lore and documents that you can run into in this world that feel way overwritten. There, there's so many documents you can run into, but unlike Elix, uh, there's most of these documents. I'm like, well, I guess I'll pick it up just because I'm a collector in these types of games, but it's not really all that interesting to read. It was for the first few hours of the game, but after that, I was just like, oh, there's just so much. There's so much, um, and it's not. It doesn't satisfy me in the way that the Elix documents do, because the Elix documents, they're like, I'm slowly piecing together the mystery of what the world was and how it came to be to this point. And that's not really the nature of the documents that you're finding here. They're most mostly just telling you how the world is right now. Um, uh, as far as like the likes, what I do like about this game... Um, the main missions, the side missions, are really interestingly written. I think those who have praised it for that, um, you know, saying, hey, this, these are the guys that did Witcher 3. So in a similar way, it's really interesting side uh, missions as far as the stories. And I found them very interesting. Um, and it was interest in the story, the main story, and the, some of the side quest stories that pulled me forward in playing the game. And that's very rare for me. I do not play games for story. I play them for the moment-to-moment -moment experience of being in this uh, imaginative world. Um and Johnny, the character that's kind of in your head, played by Keanu Reeves, is he shows up all over the place in this game, in like random side places that you go that I'm like, wow, they had him record voiceover for this? I figured I would just see him in the main story missions and that was it. But that's far from the case. He's popping up in, with a frequency that surprises me. Um, the combat is not too difficult, and so I get to enjoy combat in this world, even though the combat itself, the AI is, you know, usually bad. That's mo most times fine with me. Um, I just want to be in the world and feel like I'm strong. I don't need the world to be difficult and feel strong because I overcame a gaming challenge, you know. Um, I'm, I'm in it thematically, you know, to feel strong, not mechanically to feel strong. Um, 
motorcycles and a couple of the right cars are fun to tear across town in. I'm on my favorite motorcycle right now. Looting and the equipment and cybernetic upgrades are satisfying to find or buy for me in this game. The world is fascinating to look at and move through, even though it's very shallow. I wish that there were mechanics more uh, for the things that you're looking at, but still, fascinating world to look at. Weapons look cool and are creatively designed in terms of their, their aesthetic look. Um, and then it explores themes that I find interesting, like uh, the human soul and body modification. Uh, I mean, there's things in this game that, like, uh, when I think of how many people are exploring body modification just in the transgender uh, demographic, I think that we are more and more going to see people that say, I feel this way about myself, and so I want to make it happen with body modification, you know? Um, and so it's interesting to see this world playing with these themes and and mostly letting you decide what your view is it's not it's not saying that body modification is bad necessarily i think cyberpunk historically has been used to say that like this is a cautionary vision of the future i don't know that a person that's wanting to genuinely modify their bodies in real life would play this game and feel like they're being preached to away from that it's just kind of like a here we're playing with these ideas and for the most part letting the player decide if this is a haunting cautionary tale or if there are some things in here that like, oh, cool, I can't wait for that, you know. Um, so, yeah, it's it's interesting. So let's get into it. Uh, let's see here. Okay, I think I'm caught up on your questions. Um, David Bowes, I just happened to see uh, your comment. I'm, um, again, if you put at Christian Geek Central, spelled correctly with no spaces, it'll pop out more easily. But since I didn't happen to see it here, do, did you happen to come across the Sinner Man mission? That sounds familiar. I, I'm not sure. Um, you'll have to... Uh, well, I was going to say you have to remind me of the, the story, but uh, but uh, that might be hard to do without giving spoilers. But there's definitely like some religious stories like there's some there's some representation of christianity in some form probably based more on catholicism but that's been interesting too to see that kind of butt heads with the the naturalistic view that uh pops up in other areas of the game so all right this is a gig let me take this on not far away Let's see, what's my break? I can't remember. Okay, X is my break. All right, that's valuable to know. <laughs> I do like tearing through the city on this motorcycle. All right, let's see here. What do we got going on? Oh, let's answer. V, I've got quite an unusual one for you. Okay. I need you to deliver Trevor Brass's remains to the address attached. The young life inside was snuffed out by a wraith's bullet. Trevor's parents can't bury their son until he's back home. You can help make that happen. I have attached all the info you need. Okay. So I haven't checked my timing at all this whole time I've been doing this stream. Check. Okay, that's pretty good. So hopefully the, the sync has been pretty good between picture and picture in the game tonight. <clears throat> Just check this out really quick. Uh, da, 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 da. Find Trevor's remains and help his family find peace. Okay. So I don't have to keep anybody alive or anything crazy. Gotta watch out for some of these mines though, I guess. Oh, that's a baddie of some kind. You know what? Let's um let's do this. Let's get out the old sniper rifle. Hey, are you bad? I think you're bad. Ah! Oh, there's a bunch of them. Okay then. Oh, let's uh, let's do shotgun. Eat my little oh. apple. Oh. 
Don't feel bad. You gotta, you gotta hit him while they're down. Get around the pit. Oh. All right. So for the most part, I just go in like kind of like a Terminator. Oops. Crap. I gotta stay on top of my health here. Do that again. Not in any hurry. I'm just walking around, steadily walking toward them. Now, I think there was, oh yeah, some kind of sniper up there or something, yeah? Well, got any stairs to get me up there? Maybe like a, uh... oh hey! Is that everybody? We all done? We might be. Okay. Okay. Feeling pretty good about that. Thought I might have heard somebody. Maybe that was just me walking up the stairs. So I have not finished this game yet. Um, I, I'm i just kind of in a mode of playing through the open world before taking on the last story mission because there are some ending options you only have access to if you do a certain number of the side missions. I, I did figure out what specifically which ones those were and I've done those, but now I still just kind of feel like doing open world activities until I'm like bored. And then I'll take on the, the final mission. Um, wanted to make sure. I think I'm probably leveled up enough. Uh, I never... Well, I don't want to say never, but... It wasn't long before playing through the story missions. I felt definitely leveled enough for each of them. So it's not like I had ever felt like I had to do a bunch of side content to, to get to the main game. All right, so I guess I gotta search in here. Find Trevor's body. Oh, maybe he was in that other bathtub. I didn't get a good look in that one. Hmm. Or upstairs, he could have been on the roof maybe. Oh! No. No. Okay, not in there. Where did Trevor go? I'm going to try the roof. Or maybe just the second floor, even. Trevor! Oh, I thought that might have been a good candidate, jumping across that, since it put up a little resistance here. Trevor! Oh, jeez! was not expecting that. <laughs> uh... I got scared by linens, whatever the crap those were. 
It's a weird giant bundle of stuff. Don't be scaring me with those bundles. I got enough in the real world that's scaring me. We... A neighbor that was up really late last night... Our next door neighbor... It's actually the last night they were here before they moved out. Um, and they said that... Uh, that when they were up at 4.45 in the morning, they saw a mountain lion outside our house, like right out in the front. What the crap? I can't handle that. I can't handle that. I texted him back and said, okay, thanks, I guess we're moving too. What the crap? I'm starting to think more and more that he's on the roof, but I'm not sure how to get up there. Find Trevor's body. I'm sure trying. It's probably something really obvious. I tend to uh, not multitask very well. And so when I'm streaming, that's not a good time for me to take note of the obvious. I almost tried to jet back up there. But that's reload. Square reloads. Elix is the jetpack. Wrong game. Um. Gosh, do I need to. Oh! Ladder! <laughs> what the? Excuse me? Listen, we're gonna do this again. What? Jump! That was weird. Trevor! Trevor! Oh, gosh. I need to make absolutely sure <laughs> that, uh... I am disabling copyrighted music. Disable copyrighted music. Let's see if that gets turned off now, that little song that was playing. Um, otherwise, I'm going to have to do some annoying editing to the video later on. Nope, that one's still playing. Well, it puts the marker down there, I guess, but... I'm skeptical! Because when I go there, it just shows me the search area. Trevor. Maybe I should start using my special powers. Special Trevor searching powers. Trevor. I wonder if he just got, like, indoctrinated into their cult and he's one of the people I shot on the way in here. I wonder if he's in that bundle of, of, uh, of linens. That was upstairs, right? Maybe something in my s what? That does not look like Trevor. But there was somebody in there. Are you alive? Nope. Oh. Oh, I should be looking at all these. Oscar... Okay, so these little fridge... I didn't even notice these things. He's certainly one of these. Luis Cabal. Trevor, this gotta be right. Yeah, what do we have here? Where are you, Keanu? I just heard Keanu. Let's pick up the body. 
Okay. Transport's already waiting, so they gave me a car, I guess, because I can't use my motorcycle. Be a little tricky. Well, which one's the transport, guys? Oh, wait. Is this the transport? This can't be the transport. Hey. I think you're alive still. A number of my weapons have, like, a... non-lethal setting. Oh, there's the thing. Can I not jog? I can't jog. Okay. Alright, um... Oh, yes, 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 David Bowes says, That missions has you crucify someone? I found it to be a bit uncomfortable. Yes! Actually, I played that pretty recently. And, um... All right, load him in the back. Yeah, I played Time that... go home, Trevor. I, I played the back part of that that mission multiple times, actually, to see the different ways that I could participate or not participate. Uh, I can totally see why that would be disturbing. For me, I was kind of like, um... V, Trevor's parents can finally that give their boy a proper burial. Thank you. Truly. Contract closed. Yeah, I can totally see a bunch of people finding that disturbing. And it was certainly dark. And um, uh, But for me, I was just like... I got over that pretty quick and I was more interested in, like, what are they going for here? What is this about? So I was kind of in that mode. Um, very interesting, though. I mean, like, you, you don't have to go through... You don't actually have to nail his... The, the spikes into his hands if you don't want to. You have some options at the end, but they might not always be obvious as to, like, what choosing what is going to result in. Um, but, yeah. Yeah, that was, uh, that was interesting stuff. I mean, there's, like... I, I said this in my video when I reviewed this the first five hours of this game, that, like, I could make a whole video series on content just based in this game that I could... that would be... Very easy to comment on and, and explore from a Christian perspective. And that that certainly bore out in my playing of the rest of the game. There's all kinds of opportunities to talk about all kinds of issues <laughs> while playing this game. Very, very rich and dense in that respect. Not always, you know, I mean, certainly many times not upholding what I, a worldview that I would agree with, but... Uh, presenting so many opportunities to think about and talk about some worthwhile things. Um, Francisco asks, would you say this feels more like Blade Runner or Grand Theft Auto? Hmm. Um, uh, kind of apples and oranges. Um, because one's a movie, one's a game. So, I mean, are you talking... You must be talking about setting, right? Not, uh... Not gameplay, because those both have settings, but only one has gameplay. Um... I mean, I... It feels like... Uh, uh, you know, a mix of different things. Um... It's... I don't like Grand Theft Auto, because I, th I think that... I don't like the gameplay of Grand Theft Auto. I much prefer this gameplay of Saints Row. Both are... Gangster open city games. Um, the I like the gameplay much more in the Saints Row games. So I would say it's has a lot in common with Saints Row in some mechanical senses. But Saints Row's third person, this is first person, so combat feels very different. Um, the world is much more like Blade Runner than uh, than it is like Grand Theft Auto. Um, all right, let's pick something. A little out of the way so I can enjoy some driving. Let's do this gig over here. Client wants me to steal something. All right, client. On my way. Man, there's been times where racing through the city, I keep thinking of... Uh... <laughs> And nobody knows that music except for me. You'd have to be a huge fan of the Matrix trilogy, but uh, that is an approximation, anyway, of oof, music from 
Matrix Reloaded during the freeway chase when Trinity uh, realizes the only way she's going to be able to get away from the agents is to not race quickly through the flow of traffic, but turn around and race quickly against the flow of traffic, which I have been bold enough to try once. (laughs) It didn't end well for me, but it's still satisfying to tear around in the flow of traffic on the motorcycle in this game. And many times it's gone well for me. A few times I wreck. Motorcycles, I definitely prefer to cars in this game. Cars, I, I haven't gotten the handle on controlling as well as uh, as well as motorcycles. Now we're going to get in the thick of the city here. I don't know how many crazy turns will be uh, asked of me. But this is when the driving gets more interesting. I've had some great near misses. (laughs) I generally try to... uh, Like, if I'm not braking because I need to then I'm generally just trying to accelerate as much as I can. What is this? Oh, another car available. Okay. Nah, doesn't look very appealing to me. Not a lot of thick traffic where I am right now. Or freeway driving yet. Maybe I should get on the other side of the road just to make things interesting. Oh. So you got a turn. Oh, turn coming up here. now this has been this has by far been an easier ride than some of the other ones but what I like about the game right now and what, what I've kind of been doing is well, let me answer this first. Yo, V, there's this badge. He needs help with his investigation. Guy's known for operating in the gray zone. No scruples about working with mercs. Attach more deeds for you. All right. Um, let's see here. Rugged Warriors' Matrix Trilogy? Uh, isn't a... Uh... <laughs> I thought initially you were trying to spell corollary... Because there would be a corollary between the Matrix Trilogy and Cyberpunk, because the Matrix Trilogy is inspired quite a bit by the Cyberpunk genre. Um, Rugged Warriors' says, Matrix Trilogy isn't... isn't it a quadrilogy? I don't believe so. <laughs> I, ch- I choose to try very hard not to believe so. <laughs> oh... <laughs> <laughs> See my review for more details. All right, so um, 
I am not really equipped to be sneaky in this game. Let me see if there are any unusually good spots to be sneaky from. I do have a silenced handgun. I could always get that out. Oh, my... Th Let's see, does my big old sniper rifle have a silencer? I think it does. I think it does. Let's give it a try. Whew. That didn't sound or feel very silent, but I will take it. Good, good. Oh, I guess I'm just supposed to steal something. This... the... the handler probably doesn't want me to kill these guys, I don't know. They seem bad to me. <laughs> okay, what do we got? What do we got? Oh, this guy, for sure. He looks very bad. Alright, good. Well, let's switch. Oh. They're hacking me or something. All right, we need a shotgun. There we go. Anyone else, or is that just the music growling? I think we're okay. What is this? Uh... Not as good as the pistol I have, I don't think. Alright. So, find the computer with the footage. Here we go. Oh, nice! So, <laughs> it's coming out of several speakers, but I was able to silence that one. Alright. Is this, this must be it. Steel data. Okay. Uh, nope, but good to sell. Bring the footage to Aaron. All right, so we're leaving now. We pick that up easily? Nope, not easily enough. All right, let's get out of here. Okay. Off to Aaron we go. But yeah, what I've been trying to do as I play this game now is um, do these do these story or uh, side mission type things. But like, I'll open up the map and I try not to do ones that are right next to each other because I enjoy driving. So I'll go like, okay, let's crisscross. I'll start here. Now, what's the farthest on the other side I can go to? And then I'll crisscross over to some other side. So I'm constantly crisscrossing and having reasons to, to travel throughout the city. And, and I wish there was a little bit more of that built into the game, you know, that would give you reasons to drive a little bit more in these, uh, in these side missions. Um, Although I've I've gotten the impression from something I read the other day that like the drive this game has been criticized a lot for its driving. Admittedly, I almost strictly use the motorcycle all the time. Um, 
which I do enjoy. Where is this dude? Uh, is he upstairs or? No, no, he's he's downstairs. I just thought there'd be an entrance over there, but I guess it's over here. Yeah, I mean, this game's really something to look at. Just wish there was more interactive systems. Yeah? Aaron, it's V. I've got the scrolls. Oh, V! <laughs> Thought you were another one of those Serenity Bible whack jobs. Come in. So, hit any snags along the way? There always are. Handle them. You're real tough as nails, huh? That's how you survive out there. All right, now hand over those scrolls already. Choppity chop chop, huh? Here, take them. Great work. I'll spread the word you do solid merc work. Coming from Aaron McCarlson, that'll go far. I'm sure it will. Take care. I would much rather have a non-voice protagonist. That is always my preference. Um, because I like, especially in like an open world game, um, because then the developers are more likely to give you a lot more options in uh, dialogue. Um, because you know they're always it. It takes a lot of time and money to have all those lines recorded, and then also in my head I can make the character sound the way I want. Um, I can take a line that would probably be read one way by an actor and I can adjust the tone in my mind so that it's sarcastic or sinister or there's some kind of a subtext to it you know uh, and I can make it consistent with the character and motivations that I have in my head uh, like when they had a voice protagonist in Fallout 4 that took away significantly from the value of the game for what I want in, in a big open world Bethesda RPG. So I'm hoping in Starfield, your protagonist is not voiced. What I think would be cool, because, you know, maybe they feel like, well, that's like... That's, that's budget then. It's like a budget game if, you know... It, it comes across as having less production value if it's not voiced. Okay, so here's what you do, and I've said this before. We've got these consoles now. Oh, hang on. Let me get the phone. Aaron's happy. I'm happy. Always pays to be on good terms with badges, right? Gigs closed. Eddie's on their way. You, as a selling point of the game, take advantage of the voice recognition technology that's becoming, you know, uh, more present. I mean, especially they made a big deal out of it with Connect. Um, but, I mean, both of these consoles, I think, would be capable of, of using voice technology so that when you are playing a game and you see the dialogue choices, you have the option, you know, turn it on and off in settings. You have the option of having the dialogue selected based on what you read out loud. You read the line out loud, um, and then it, it activates that one. And so you could put your controller down and you could have a conversation you know playing the part being fed your script and you can choose you know kind of your script in a sense um and then you're having this back and forth dialogue in a first person open world rpg like a bethesda rpg uh that has a bunch of dialogue choices you know like in fallout 3 or new vegas you know oh that'd be so cool um, I don't know that I would use it all the time. There'd probably be plenty of nights, you know, where I'd turn off. Or maybe, you know, like the Pip-Boy thing they had with Fallout 4, it'd be the kind of thing where most users, I'm sure, used it for a little while and they're like, ah, never mind. But at least then, it would be a selling point and not, you know, like a, a downside to see, you know, the fact that there's no voice acting. Because you, if they sell it that way, you... Uh, become the voice actor. You become the character. It's not someone making 
choices for you in how your character sounds. You decide how your character sounds, you know. Um, because they never have all the options that I want uh, in terms of voice actor types, certainly. And then especially if they voice act, if they voice all the dialogue, then that trims down drastically the, uh, the dialogue options. All right, hey, let's go take on this cyber psycho. I don't know how tough he is, but... Or she. These are people in this world that are having a... Their body is having a bad reaction to one or more of their, uh, their implants. And it's kind of making them nuts. And so they become dangerous. And then I'll probably move on to the next game. Or the last game of the evening, I should say. Wow, my gosh. These always go by fast. Did I really play two games before the... Yeah, Agents of Mayhem and Elix. Dang. It's funny, when I do these live streams, I can be pretty focused on, you know, one or two games, and then that focus, that focus gets lost after a live stream, because so often live streaming games will remind me what I really enjoy about them. And I had started to drill into a focus recently, actually, with the last game that I'm going to play tonight. This really took me by surprise, and I'll explain that, I'll explain why when I get to it. But now, man, just, I mean, Agents of Mayhem, I'm good. I don't, I don't need to play more of that. I'm good for another few months or whatever. Or probably uh, till after some summer gaming news events that, that make me want to play it again. Um, Elix, I'm done with. I'm, ret I'm retiring Elix, I think I can say. So thank you for joining me for the end of that. But playing this, I'm like, oh. I like motorcycling around. Are you here to say goodnight, kiddo? All right, come on in. All right, let me pause this for a second. All right. <laughs> Sleep good, my boy. Love you. Mm. Love good, you. Good night. Good night. Ooh. Good night, viewers. <laughs> <laughs> Love you, too. Bye-bye. That's my younger son, Titus. He's 11. And we have been experimenting with getting a separate PlayStation Plus subscription for an account that they can use, both of my boys, so that I can experiment with playing some o some online games with them that, that would require a Plus subscription. I might end up getting a second PlayStation Plus subscription and maintaining two now so that I can play with my boys because uh, we've been having some fun. Specifically with the last game I'm going to play tonight. Um, and so it's very possible that for the charity live stream this year, an unlock some kind of a... Some kind of a benchmark, whatever you call them. Oh! Dang it, I thought I was going to make it! Man, I've zigged and zagged between cars like that. Love those close calls. But anyway, it's very likely the next charity live stream, uh, if I raise a certain amount of money, whatever I set that at, that... Uh, Titus will jump on and play some with me while I stream. Oops. Oh, wait. Okay, I thought I missed it. Excuse me. Oh, dang. Oh, man, I'm really hitting cars a lot. <laughs> All right. All right. Okay, tricky, tricky. Let's see if, uh... These guys can be pretty tough, and so... I'm always interested if there's a way to kind of take them out from a distance. But that is often not an option. See, I'm looking for something I can kind of climb on or something. 
Oh, here we go. Oh, but is it is he indoors? He's probably in. Oh, hold up. What do we got here? Can I get up there? Oh, oh, oh. Oh, dang it! I thought I was going to be able to get some elevation here. Dang it. Um, if I could climb up on this thing. Oh, jeez. Oh, man. Okay. Uh, I'm going to have to... I'm going to have to be up close and personal. Big shock. Oh, nice, but doesn't look fun to drive. I get these offers. Now and then via text to buy new vehicles. And now I've trapped myself down here. What the crap? Uh, crap. This did not go as I had planned. Uh, let's see here. Garivik asks, uh, I assume to me, you like uh, pepperoni pizza more than sausage? Is that what you mean? Um, yeah, definitely. Uh, definitely not. I mean, I'll eat sausage and pepperoni. I won't eat, usually, unless it's all there is and I'm hungry, sausage only. Um, definitely prefer pepperoni. Okay. What do we got here? This looks like a lot of trouble. Very good. What's going on here? Dead corpo. Caused by severe concussion. Lots of these explosive thingies. Jeez. Oh! Jeez Louise. Okay. Um. Okay. Ah. Is this what you want me to do, game? What do you want me to do? Oh, jeez. Hmm. seeing a ton of options here. I feel like as soon as one of these things goes, I'm gonna, like, alert the dude. But maybe that's just what needs to happen. Oh boy, he's a fast one. Doesn't look like there's a back way for him to get to me. I don't want those to... Crap. Oh. Ah. Well, come on, then. Ugh. Come on, let's do this over here. There we go. Ugh. Gotta come back this way, dude. I'm not walking through your minds. Oh, he's re he's like healing or something. That's not typical. What you got, dude? Oh! Ugh. Ah. 
There we go. There we go. Stop, don't do it. Yeah, again, just not quite that interested. All right, so search the area to collect information. I'll be happy to do that as we wrap it up with Cyberpunk Epic Upgrade Components. Um. Hello? Hmm. Locked? What in the world am I, uh, supposed to be looking for here? Yeah, I don't think there's anybody gonna let me in there. What do we got here? Nothing helpful. Did I just not search the body well enough? I feel like usually this is more straightforward. Maybe it's these uh, messages. Yep, there you go. Okay. Okay. Alright. Message Regina. Open messages. Regina... Auto shop owner was a rampage, but I managed to put him to sleep. Yeah, sure, that's definitely what you did with whatever kind of crazy burning ammo you had, V. <laughs> Maybe he meant put him to sleep like... <laughs> do 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 Alright. Great. I think we're done then. Mission complete! And nothing more to get from him, so... I can go ahead and save... ...and pick this up some other time on my lonesome. And, uh, I'm gonna move on to our last game of the night. For more chat about geek entertainment, answers to your questions, and news from the wider world of Christian geekery, get the Christian Geek Central podcast today on iTunes and other podcast services.